Thank you, everyone, for joining. So today I'll be talking about uh, something about automotive and application security. So today, uh, with the gro uh, growing concern of, of automotive uh, cybersecurity and automotive thefts, you, have, you may have noticed that car thefts have been uh, on the rise lately, causing distress in financial loss to countless individuals. In fact, I recently had a first-hand experience in car hacking using a vulnerable API. Yes. Again, my name is Mohammed Shain, and I'm an application security engineer at UST. I'm the chapter leader of ASRG Kerala. If you don't know what ASRG is, ASRG is Automotive Security Research Group. We deals with automotive-related uh, vulnerabilities. Then I'm a bug bounty hunter and a photographer and a motorsports athlete. This is, this is a little disclaimer. The research and findings presented in, the, uh, in this presentation are solely my own and does not represent the views or opinions of my employer. My company has not been involved in the reporting process, and any errors or omissions in the presentation are my responsibility alone. Okay, let's start with a uh, simple question. Is car hacking possible? So what do you guys think? Yes, that's a good answer. So uh, a modern car is a computer. It's, it's a combination of computers on four wheels. And you could also check uh, YouTube uh, for this video. Jeep hacked by Charlie Miller and Chris Walser. This attack was done on 2015 on a Jeep, uh, Jeep Cherokee or Chrysler, I'm not sure about that, by the guys. Uh, Charlie Miller and Chris Falsack, and uh, they took the uh, known as the Illmatics. So it's a wonderful uh, video about how they hacked into a connected car, and they got the complete control of the car. So, next. So the agenda for today is I'll be talking about connected cars, the CAN bus. There's a network inside the car, it's CAN bus. Then Telematics control unit, attack vectors, or how we can hack into a car through different uh, entry points. Uh, the application, the importance of application security in automotive security. And there will be a case study on Honda City and responsible disclosure. And if you find any vulnerability in any automotive products or, uh, or something that's related to an automotive OEM, how to report those vulnerabilities. Because most of the, uh, if I'm talking about India, most of the automotive manufacturers doesn't have a proper responsible disclosure program. Not sure about the status in UK. So if they don't have uh, responsible disclosure, I'll be uh, discussing how to uh, disclose it responsibly. Modern cars, let's start with, uh, start with modern cars. An F-35 fighter jet has around 25 million lines of code, and a modern car has 100 million lines of code. So now you could just get an idea about how, uh, how, complex, are, how complex modern cars are. So we could uh, commonly categorize uh, modern cars into three types, autonomous vehicle, and uh, autonomous vehicle is a vehicle where it doesn't ha need a driver to operate. A connected vehicle, it's, it's a car that is connected to the internet or it's connected uh, to another car or something, uh, some uh, infrastructure. Then connected autom autonomous vehicle, that's combination of connected and auto autonomous vehicle. So let's start with some basic concepts of uh, the ECU and sensors. So this is a, a diagram of a modern car, and as you could see, there are multiple sensors. These sensors are like input devices in a car. So we know that input devices are something that take the input. So let's start, let's check the tire pressure monitor. It's it's it takes the pressure inside the tire and it gives to a computer inside the car. And fog lights sensor light sensors will uh, automatically check the uh, lighting conditions outside, and it will. Uh, yeah, to give to the uh, computers. So, um, can anyone guess how many uh, sensors does a modern car might have? A rough number would be great. Okay, it's nice. It's more than 100. <laughs> yeah, but you're close enough. It's around 200, 250. Yes, makes sense. So, then comes ECU. ECUs are the computers that control these sensors and not control it, uh, take the inputs from the sensor. So, so a modern car has around 100 ECUs. So now we could say a car, a modern car is something that has 
100 sensors and it runs on four wheels. And ECU is uh, not like that, uh, not like a, a common computer. It's it's just a small piece of hardware that does a that do uh, uh, a predefined task. It, it's not that complex. So now you know there are input devices, computers inside a car. So now we need a network. So commonly, uh, auto manufacturers use CAN bus. CAN is uh, controller radio network and this is a relatively a cheaper network, and uh, this is uh, it's, it's just a, a twisted pair of cables, wires that's interconnected to the ECUs. So why they use CAN bus is uh, CAN bus is cheaper and it's faster, and uh, it's uh, as I mentioned it's a twisted pair, so it's uh, less prone to electromagnetic uh, electromagnetic um, attacks. So yeah, so together uh, we could. Uh, Consider uh, there are uh, body control unit which controls which handles all the body related issues or the uh, head units and there's an instrument cluster unit uh, it's for um, measuring the speed and uh, RPMs then then the onboard diagnostic port so uh, so all the computers are connected through this uh, CAN bus and there's an entry point so on board that's OBD. That's onboard diagnostic port. So have anyone seen an OBD port in your car? Great. So uh, generally you could see uh, it under the steering wheel or the dashboard. And if you have access to uh, OBD, you could generally get access to the entire canvas. So what happens in a canvas is uh, when a, whenever uh, an issue sends a signal, that will travel all across this network. So it also goes to the OBD. So you could get and you could get the data from the OBD. So uh, okay, now we know there's an internal network inside a car. Now we need an external network to make it more like accessible via internet, and that is telematics control unit. The telematics control unit is a little hardware that is used to uh, connect or make a car connect to the internet. So uh, these are this is a uh, like a diagram of uh, the OBD port and uh, the CAN bus is directly interacting with the uh, port number six and 14. And the uh, seven, ISO K line, K line is used for uh, the diagnostic purposes. And the, uh, and we could, uh, most of, uh, every um, auto manufacturers will modify the uh, vendor option details and they will change accordingly. So uh, you'll not see what you see in a Mercedes and that's not uh, same as that you see in a Honda. So now let's talk about uh, the telematics control unit. Uh, telematics control unit is hardware used to connect a car use, uh, to the internet or uh, other computer. It has many uh, protocols like V2X. V2X means vehicle to everything, and V2V is vehicle to vehicles, and V2I vehicles to infrastructure. So these are the uh, Protocols that uh, telematics control you, uh, unit use and applications. Most of the telematics control unit use. Um, nowadays, we use mobile applications. Before, uh, the pro it also used uh, SSH and uh, protocols like Telnet. And security. Security is a mm, is a important aspect of telematics control uh, unit. And if you uh, that means if you get access to a TCU, then basically you get the entire car. Access to the car. Okay, this is a diagram of uh, the uh, telematics control unit. It has a memory, battery, and the GPS modem. And GPRS modem is optional, but more like, the new cars come with an eSIM or a physical uh, plastic SIM. So let's talk about possible entry points of a car. So uh, let's start with the uh, the OBD2, yeah. OBD2, you could uh, access a car or a car network using OBD2 port. Then Wi-Fi, if, you, if your car has Wi-Fi enabled, you could use Wi-Fi to get into the uh, different systems. And software updates. Uh, you know, the, the previous modern cars or the cars that are uh, manufactured before 2020s doesn't have a um, internet connection. They were like, 
they have a Wi-Fi and you could connect it to the your own mobile hotspot and you could that you could use that to update your system. Then software, uh, then GPS, uh, USBs, USB. Uh, if you check uh, Nissan head unit unit hack, you could see a um, a researcher tried to access the root shell of a of his uh, infotainment system using a USB. What he did was he uh, he modified the update and he uh, he privileged he generally data privilege escalation in the Linux machine of the uh, infotainment system. And the interesting and one of the easiest part to uh, hack into a car that's mobile applications. Nowadays, most of the uh, automotive uh, cars come with mobile applications that are connected. So you could uh, eventually do uh, unlock the doors. You could start the engine. You could do everything that uh, that can be auto like that can be done manually. So these are the possible entry points, and this is just a. Uh, Examples. These are examples. There are uh, there are multiple en uh, entry points than this. So attacks. Uh, attacks can be uh, considered into uh, two: physical and remote attacks. Physical attacks are uh, those that we need access to the uh, the car. That means we need to get inside the car, or you need access to the canvas. And then comes remote. And uh, in remote uh, attacks. What we uh, we will be attacking the Wi-Fi, the telematics control units, or the Bluetooth, etc. So this is a, uh, a bird's eye view from the Car Hackers Handbook, and that's a wonderful book for if you are interested in uh, car hacking. So the external uh, vectors are Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, tire pressure monitoring system, passive keyless entries, and the internal is USB, OBD2, and CAN bus splicing. So uh, CAN bus splicing. Mm. Have uh, have you heard about a video? Like, or have you seen a video about uh, thieves stealing a car uh, using a JBL device? Yes. So that attack was can injection, and what uh, basically the attackers do is they will uh, they will get access through the uh, to the canvas you, uh, via the headlight. They will remove the headlamps and they will get the access. The twisted pair bias, and they will use. Can bus injection to start the car and get away with it. So connected car. A connected car is one that has its own uh, connection to the internet, you, uh, usually via wireless local network that allows the car uh, to share internet access and data or uh, with all devices inside and outside the car. Now, most of the connected cars, like I mentioned, most of the connected car use mobile apps. Uh, it's because use you you could use uh, mobile apps instead of key fobs. So key fobs, uh, most of the time I used to uh, get uh, I used to leave my key fob somewhere and I forgot. So uh, now I don't want to think about key fobs. I could use my mobile phone to access the car, and it's easy to use. If you know you how to use a smartphone, then it's easy. Then you could also track your car real time. You could uh, there will be GPS uh, units inside the car, and that's connected to the mobile apps, and you could. Uh, Track it via the mobile phones. So uh, the case study was, uh, or the um, the hack was done on uh, Honda City fifth gen. That was uh, that's um, that was manufactured in India, and this attack was uh, also uh, the many of the Honda cars were vulnerable that had a telematics control unit, and other uh, the other model was. Uh, an EHV that was an electric variant of Honda City, but I haven't done it uh, practically, but I could do that. So uh, I would like to mention uh, this vulnerability is completely fixed right now, and it's not possible to hack the same way that I'm going to show you. And uh, let's start with the story. Uh, before um, getting into car hacking, I, uh, I have gone through many videos. And uh, the uh, videos and blogs. And one interesting video that I uh, encountered was internet connected trucks can be tracked and hacked, researcher finds. And there, there was a researcher called uh, Jose Car Carlos Note, and he found some internet connected trucks using Shodan. So you guys are familiar with Shodan, right? So no, it's a search engine for uh, internet connected uh, devices. 
And I was uh, curious to know more about it. And I, after reading this uh, article, I went to Shorten and I searched for some telematics gateway unit. So what is a telematic gateway unit? Telematics gateway unit has a high performing application process uh, hardware platform at its core. It offers various, various advantages when compared to a TCU. Basically, a telematics gateway unit or a TGU is a much more complex device than a TCU. Uh, this includes higher data throughput and capacity to store data, uh, offline data, for a longer time. So uh, this research was completely uh, done by Jos Carlos, and I have I've just reproduced it. And I went to Shorten and I searched uh, the port number and uh, and the header of this telematics uh, gateway unit. And interesting part was uh, this uh, TGU uses a, um, a protocol that's a telnet, and it's unencrypted, and it's uh, much less safer than SSH. So, and there was a, uh, the crazy part is, it is unauthenticated. So if you have an IP, and if you have the uh, port number, you could generally, uh, you could basically access this uh, complete uh, telematics gateway unit. And this is the C4 Max gateway unit, and now the vendor have uh, added a, an update uh, to add a password as well, like a username and a password as well. But still, uh, uh, you know, the truck drivers or the owners are not aware of this, and they are keeping it in default stage. Uh, that is without a password. So uh, I got uh, around 228 uh, results, and uh, one was one of those was uh, accessible. And just the comment, telnet and the port, sorry, telnet and the port, I got access to the uh, telematics gateway unit. And this was the background story. So uh, I, I was wondering, oh, uh, like, till that time, I thought car hacking was a difficult process. It's still, it is a difficult process, and uh, it's, it's one of the harder, you know, it's a harder part in cybersecurity. But I was, uh, like, from this, I understood you know, the, the telematics control unit is an interesting part, and I could look into that. And I checked Google uh, multiple times about telematics control unit, telematics gateway unit, and everything, connected cars. And the next day, Google gave me a result. This was a Google ad, actually. Google, uh, from the, the corner of the uh, screen, I saw an ad that states that control all the Honda City with just your voice. So I understood that oh, Honda City has connected features. Uh, in India, we uh, don't have, now it's OK, but Last year, it was less common to have uh, connected cars. So this car was launched in late 2020s. And uh, like I, uh, like after seeing this, the first thing I did was I called a local dealership and I asked them like, whether they have this car. And they said, yes, so they, like, they have it. We have it, and uh, it's connected. And I asked them how to set up these connected features. And they said, uh, we will set up everything, and you just need to use the mobile app to control it. And yes, then I researched about what Honda Connect is. And Honda Connect is uh, a technology that, use, uh, that is used by Honda to uh, control its uh, cars. And using the smartwatches, smartphones, and yes, smart appli applications. So features of Honda Connect. These are the uh, common features of Honda Connect. They had uh, almost 30 plus features. And the interesting features were AC on off, door lock unlock, and car finder boot uh, unlock the uh, boot, etc. Then um, this is how the Honda Connect app interacts with the car. There's an infrastructure by Honda, and the uh, app sends requests to this cloud servers, and the cloud server interacts with the telematics inside the car. So I got all this idea from internet, and then I started testing the mobile apps. First, uh, during mobile application security or testing, we do two things, uh, basically two things, like static analysis, where we don't uh, execute the application. We just uh, decompile the application and uh, read the code and check the code for any vulnerabilities. And uh, during dynamic analysis, uh, we perform or we uh, execute the application and we find the vulnerability. Okay. So, First thing, uh, I use MobiSurf for testing the, uh, the code, and 
I got an API that is Proud API or Honda Connect, and I understood this is the API that interacts with the telematics control unit. Then I, I, I did the general stuff that we do, like uh, directory brute forcing, Google docking, everything, but I didn't get any uh, good results. Then I was bored and I went to the uh, dynamic NAS part. The application was uh, secure from the uh, from a basic view or a high level view. The application had root detection, then had SSL pinning. So root detection is uh, nothing, uh, but if you install the application in a rooted device, it doesn't work. It, it gets crashed. Uh, you, like you could see the uh, message here. Sorry, Honda Connect is not com uh, compatible with rooted devices. So uh, then SSL pinning is a security um, mechanism where it doesn't, the app doesn't allow you to intercept the traffic. And so, uh, so tools of the trade is uh, you could use Frida to bypass those security controls. I hope everyone is familiar with Frida. If not, uh, Frida is, an, is a dynamic instrumentation framework where you could inject uh, scripts uh, during the runtime of the application. And Verb Suite is a proxy tool. Uh, you could uh, use it to intercept the traffic. And Genymotion is a, an emulator that is used to emulate, emulate Android devices. So bypassing root detection, I used a simple uh, Frida script to bypass the root detection, and now the error message is not there. OK, now, the, now you could see how I got the interface of the application in the emulator. So the app uh, requires a mobile phone, registered mobile phone, to uh, to log in. Yeah. So there's no way to register because the uh, dealership should uh, give the account. So I uh, like I found a friend who owns a Honda City fifth gen, and I called him, and he gave me all these details, and I got it. And uh, first thing uh, was I used a tool called HTTP Toolkit to uh, to what bypass this SSL pin, and uh, and to intercept the traffic. So I gave the phone number there, and there was an OTP. And you could see the OTP 5613 was uh, reflected in the response. It was so simple to get the initial access. And that was 5613. I entered it, and I got into the next page. But there was a second layer of security. That was MPIN. MPIN is nothing but it's second layer of authentication. It recurs the uh, recurs an MPIN, uh, or MPIN is uh, a a password, four-digit password, and a, uh, or a mobile biometric, or the mobile biometrics. So basically, if you have your biometrics enabled in your phone, or fingerprint enabled in your phone, you, you should use that. So that was a good feature, actually. So uh, you know, if anyone get access to the account, they can't do anything because the the real user should be there. Then, but the interesting part was can be uh, bypassed using the forward M pin function. And forgot mpin was nothing but this. Uh, it has the same vulnerability as the disclosing a one, the OTP. And uh, I got the uh, the second security feature was bypassed, and then as you could see the I got the initial access cars initial access. And uh, the other thing was this application doesn't stay so long. It will it is like a five minute uh, expiration time. So to bypass that, it was very simple. I automated all the tasks, and I created a Python script. And this was what I could do. I could start the engines, and I could unlock the boot, and I could uh, what, unlock the DOS. Basically, I could do anything to the car. So then comes the trickiest part, disclosure. Honda India doesn't have a responsible disclosure program. And uh, what, I, uh, what uh, I did was I went to Auto ISAC. Auto ISAC is a community for uh, reporting vulnerabilities. They work closely with automotive, automotive manufacturers to address the vulnerabilities and uh, fix them. And I reached out to them, and they were so helpful. And I got a contact in Honda India technical team, and I contacted him. And I would also like to thank Honda to uh, actively looking into the issue and fix the vulnerability immediately. This, this vulnerability was fixed within 30 minutes. 
the Honda India team contacted me via a video call and uh, I shared the screen. And uh, the first thing what they asked was, is it, uh, is it actually possible or it's just a theory? And I asked whether they have Honda car and he said, yes, I own a Honda fifth gen and I asked his phone number and I hacked his car in front of the video. <laughs> and he was really impressed and he said, how to fix this vulnerability? And I helped them and they were very much uh, cooperative. They thanked me and everything went well. And yes, that was my Honda car hack. Thank you. <laughs>